My name's uh, John Walker and I'm the political editor of the Birmingham Post and Birmingham Mail and I'm uh, a lobby correspondent based at uh, the House of Commons. My advice to anybody looking to follow a um, particular uh, political policy area and uh, keep up with developments will be to first of all find out which ministers are um, responsible for this. You you'll should find it quite easy to work out which department is responsible but if you go to the department website you'll find a list of ministers and their specific responsibilities. Once you know that you can follow the minister um, for example, go to They Work For You, the website which um, tells you what MPs are doing, set up a uh, search for that particular minister, set up an RSS feed for their activities in Parliament. You'll find that they're answering questions, both all questions from MPs and written questions on the areas of their responsibility. It doesn't mean that everything they say or do is going to be of any um, interest or relevance to you. but. Um, if you uh, stick with it over time, you'll find that uh, you find some pretty good material there. Um, you'll also want to find um, MPs that are um, interested in this topic, uh, whatever topic it is that you're covering. Um, that's not quite so easy, but um, the, the best way of doing that is to follow the ministers and see who's asking them questions, who's taking an interest. And uh, you should, over time, if you're sort of alert and uh, watching what's going on, realise that there are particular MPs who are particularly interested in the topic. So you could follow those too. Um, do you uh, might also want to look at um, Commons uh, motions, uh, which are known as early day motions. Um, which you can find again uh, by searching Google for um, Commons uh, motions. Um, MPs are able to submit a motion on any topic that they want to uh, talk about, any topic they have an interest in. And um, if you look at the motions, you'll find that um, there's a list published uh, showing which topics are being discussed. Uh, there's no easy way of finding the ones that you want, but um, just go through the list, ignore the ones that aren't of interest to you, you'll find um, what MPs are saying. And sometimes these can be quite big stories. I mean, you'll find um, on some occasions uh, 100, 200 MPs even signing a motion, uh, sometimes even government MPs criticising government policy. Um, other times it'll be issues that um, don't generate that much attention that maybe are only of interest to two or three MPs and they sign the motion, but uh, these issues would be ignored perhaps, not seen by anybody, um, and there's someone like you who is uh, watching what goes on and uh, picks up on the motion. Um, another um, area you might want to look at is uh, the official departmental website um, for whichever policy area you're, you're interested in. Now, this will um, have a section uh, dedicated to press releases, uh, information for the media, um, and that's clearly something to keep an eye on, the uh, press releases that they're putting out. But you might want to take a look for other sections of the website too, which may be easy to find or they may be hidden away, it depends on the uh, department, so you may need to do a bit of digging. Um, look for um, FOI responses issued by the department, sometimes they'll have a policy of automatically putting these on the website and uh, you can do get some quite interesting information there. Um, also, you may want to look at um, consultations that a uh, department is uh, uh, carrying out. Um, the great thing about this is that uh, departments will ask for interested parties to express an opinion on um, green papers or on white papers on any uh, policies that they're pursuing. Um, and then they'll usually publish the responses. They won't always um, issue a press release, they won't always tell everybody that they've published the responses, but um, they'll do it, they'll stick them on the website. So you'll be able to find what organisations like maybe uh, local councils, um, other non-governmental uh, organisations, charities, businesses, um, business organisations, a CBI, um, sometimes um, just members of the public, but these may be people who have interesting uh, things to say you'll be able to find out what these people have said to the government in response to, uh, to a consultation. That stuff's not always easy to find. You need to dig, dig through the departmental website, um, find out where it is and work out the easiest way of uh, keeping up to date with, uh, with consultations. Um, the other point that I would raise is um, checking Hansard, um, which is the uh, uh, 
a record of our debates in the House of Commons, um, again published on the parliamentary website. Now, um, I mentioned they work for you, which effectively feeds you information from Hansard, um, which uh, you can use to help you follow specific MPs, including government ministers. But it's worth being aware of the overall um, publication that's published each day. It's a huge amount of uh, text. You're not going to be able to read it all every day. Being aware of, of what's there, and um, just once or twice, if you're interested in politics, do read Hansard, read the entire day's worth. It'll take you a good hour to sit, sit there and read through it. But it's a really good way of finding out what's going on in the House of Commons. And one thing that you'll find there is um, written answers. Um, you're all going to be aware that um, MPs can ask questions to uh, the Prime Minister. You see that on TV. Um, they also get to ask questions to other ministers um, on other days of the week. What's not quite so well known is that they can ask written questions um, as well. The great thing about a written question from an MP's point of view is that they're guaranteed an answer. They don't have to ask the speaker to call them. They can ask about any topic that interests them. And they, the minister has to respond, the minister has to answer. Now, you'll find that in Hansard the written answers are published. They're split up by topic, uh, by government department rather. Um, so you, you can look at the department that interests you and uh, the topic is clearly marked. So uh, you can keep an eye on written answers and see if there are any questions being asked and answers being given on the topic that you're investigating. Um, I think those are the, uh, the key uh, points that come to mind. Oh yes, the only other thing I was going to mention was um, the House of Commons agenda, which you'll find on the website. Um, uh, simply look for Commons uh, What's On, I think it's called, on the site. Tells you what's happening that day, tells you um, what debates are taking place, um, who's answering questions, which ministers are going to be answering questions, and you'll even see a list of um, the MPs who are asking questions and the topics that they're going to be covering. Now you can actually watch the um, debates once you know what's going on, or the question and answer session, on a website called Parliament Live, which is uh, separate to um, the House of Commons website, Parliament Live. You can watch the debates live there. But if you don't have time to do that, that's fine. Um, you can check it out on Hansard the next day. But looking at the agenda lets you know what's happening on one day so that you know if there's anything worth uh, taking an in interest in. And if so, then the next day you can make sure you check it in Hansard. Select Committee is another, um, another good source of uh, information um, to uh, investigate particular topics is a uh, common Select Committee. Each government department has a corresponding um, Select Committee. <coughs> and the role of the Select Committee is to um, scrutinise the work of the department. The Select Committees are backbench committees, they're not part of the government. Um, they represent the House of Commons and the House of Lords actually also has its own committees. Now these committees will hold um, inquiries into uh, specific issues. So if you're interested in, um, uh, for example, um, the Olympics, that's a uh, DCMS issue, Department of Culture, Media and Sports, but a committee for culture, media and sports will hold all sorts of inquiries into all sorts of different issues which may not be of interest to you. Take a look and see what they're holding inquiries into. It may be the topic that you're interested in. If so, then there's a number of things that you can do. You can um, look at um, evidence sessions. Um, they'll have e bring in experts to um, answer questions from the MPs. You can follow that. You may get a good story that way. You can look at uh, the report once the committee has finished its inquiry and has published its findings. There's bound to be a good story there. And in the meantime, while the inquiry is taking place, you can uh, check the uh, committee's website, which once again you'll find if you dig around in the House of Commons website. Each committee has their own um, dedicated section where they will publish um, the uh, written evidence that they've received as part of the inquiry. And uh, you'll find there uh, that um, organisations, local authorities, NGOs, all sorts of bodies will submit written evidence to um, common select committee inquiries. And that can often make uh, a pretty good story. And um, if you find something good, you can probably, um, there's a very good chance at least that nobody else will have spotted it because there's a limit to how far um, existing media 
dig into the um, select committee inquiries so you could find a very good story there.